Hey, this is Brian Beeler. We're down in the Storage Review conference room, the lower conference room, and we've got the guys from Veeam with us today. We've got Rick and Corinne. Kevin's here with the lab. And what we're doing is working through a screen capture session of upgrading our Veeam application, backup and recovery, replication, the whole suite, all of our good Veeamness to version 10. And 10's been coming for a while, and we're really excited to have it. So, Corinne, why don't you take over and show us what we're up to? Yeah, this is just a view of the console prior to the update, so you can see that it is simple and you don't have to worry about reconfiguring your jobs just to run an update. This interface, uh, we've kind of tried to simplify it so you can't miss the upgrade button here. And once this process starts, uh, it'll make sure all of your jobs in the background have stopped. So, Rick, we've been waiting for this for some time we're excited to have it what are we looking at here in terms of code base because this isn't you're not final final all the way yet are you or, or maybe oh it's are. final it's real all right uh, so people customers and certain uh, partners and certain customers are using this now so the thought here is that we've always wanted veeam products to be simple reliable and flexible but as crin drives through this upgrade what we're actually going to see is that going through these steps are very intuitive and yes, it has been a while that it's happened, you know, for V10 to come into existence. And, you know, Corinne, why don't you narrow, narrate us through what, what we're doing here? Yeah, that first page there was just introducing that you've accepted our terms and agreement. Uh, nothing's really changed as that comes along. And well, you're, there... you're not going to start trying to bill Kevin now, are you? No, not, okay, not just yet. Right. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to see what components are going to be updated. Uh, we do have a new license that will be applied. That's a good point because we've already put the license there on the desktop, but for customers in the portal, right, is where you're going to get your new license for V10. Hopefully I did this right. I just made this license today. It looks good. <laughs> yeah. Don't make us start over. We're like nice. So seconds. if you want a free license, all you have to do is email him. <laughs> That's how Kevin operates. Looks like we're running under the local accounts here, the same SQL database. Again, the update process isn't going to change anything. Well, it'll update this database. That's the main thing. And again, this, you know, the real requirement for people upgrading to V10, just read the user interface. It's See, this pretty is why you're here, because Kevin yeah. doesn't read. That's why we had to bring you guys in from Columbus to get this done. I click buttons. I do that well. Now this is one of my favorite pages. Veeam has a lot of components that we can deploy out and right here is this checkbox that's going to prevent you from waiting and manually installing all of those components uh, yourself later. So example would be like a remote proxy or a WAN accelerator, you know, when you think about distributed deployments, some of those, that's what we mean by remote components. Hyper-V host. What's, what's a typical time commitment assuming all goes well start to finish you know that it it always depends but i mean i've i've seen it myself in my own environments sub 10 minutes okay if you have a lot of proxies and a lot of server components that need to update that can take some time to push those out but other than that it uh shouldn't take too awfully long okay cool now the one thing to note here you know, Brian, you, you indicated, you know, why do we have it now, right? So we're recording here on the 11th of February. Whenever it goes up, we'll go up. But we're in an interesting time right now. We're in what Veeam calls RTM, Release to Manufacturing. And that's a kind of a deprecated term in the world. But what that means is we've given this V10 release to our partners, service providers, managed service provider partners, who do things like our Cloud Connect service where they host backups in the sky for customers, for sure. example. And this situation is that the service providers need to be on the current or higher version to receive customer backups. So, you know, currently the technology doesn't permit if the service provider is at 9.5, we don't have the capability yet for a customer to be at 10 and send right. their so backups So it could be in. mismatched, but the service provider has right. to be higher. Right. And we have a process where we bake in some time for 
the service providers and other partners, including some of our alliance partners. I know you guys work a lot with the storage vendors. They've been provided this access as well to this release, and we want them to be familiar with it as well. And then the other side of it is we have certain customers, what we call early availability access, where they need this new capability. So we've gone through the steps to make sure that those types of customers can get it ahead of time with the small caveat that will give you this, but you can't go send your backups to Cloud Connect, for example. Okay. And, you know, we'll then transition to the general availability phase. So we, we think about these releases, and it has been it has been a great journey to get to this V10 milestone. Our co-founders, my boss, Danny Allen, the CTO, is really stoked about V10 because it is absolutely the biggest release we've ever done. And it almost does this installation kind of not justice because the hard part has already happened here we answered what four five clicks sure. of a wizard the hard work's being done right now with the installation of the console and the, the, the components but what really happens and i don't even know if i can enumerate but there's really 10 products that are being updated with this release and i'll do my best here brian since we've got a couple more <laughs> you, moments you only have nine fingers how's this gonna work <laughs> you got me there um <laughs> Veeam Backup and Replication, the the uh, agent for Windows, the agent for Linux, Veeam 1, the plugin for Oracle RMAN, now exists RMAN on Solaris as well, the SAP HANA plugin, and I wish I remembered Anton's rest of the list, but uh, there's like oh, Enterprise Manager and the Nutanix integration, and I think I'll find it just as we go here, because good thing I have internet here in your in your lab. <laughs> See, this is the problem. You never say you've got ten things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just just start naming the things, and if you leave one off, then no one will know the difference. Yeah, maybe, Not but to no. Not mention well, all of these explorers getting updated as that's well. That's true. With the faster uh, restore times. What is an explorer, by the way, for the listeners? A uh, restore explorer allows us to be able to restore all kinds of files, including applications without having to do a full restore of that VM, including things like SQL, Exchange, SharePoint, and with our Office 365 products, including OneDrive in that uh, fold. Yeah, that's a great point. Recovering the data is where it is at. So, yeah, I'm going to ghost Dev's list here. And what did I forget? Oh, Oracle for our man on Windows in Oracle... On uh, our so man for one. Linux, okay. he counted them twice. So, yeah, hey, I do have ten finger, fingers, yeah, Brian. Yeah. I did stop at nine. But, <laughs> and now uh, we're starting services. Yeah, so the Almost install, done. the hard work's done. We have actually upgraded this environment. So, Kevin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your installation here? You know, Storage Review does some great stuff, but what does this environment, you know, connect to, and what do you back up in here? So right now, um, our environment, we back up most of our uh, data center. A lot of it, uh, some things might just live for a couple of weeks. Those, uh, uh, if they're not as important, they kind of live off in the background to not worry as much about it. Uh, but uh, our primary vCenter, a lot of our uh, uh, low gens for our benchmarks, all those uh, sit in uh, Veeam to get backed up in uh, regular processes. Uh, we also have uh, certain ones where we've done uh, one backup uh, where as long as it's uh, functional, uh, if we ever destroy low gens or um, something breaks, it's not a um, there's no information uh, contained within them to worry about uh, over time. So just as long as there's one copy, uh, we can go back to it. We've actually leveraged that quite a few times, where I've exploded something in the lab, <laughs> and I've had to go back uh, to a. Uh, You've backup. exploded something in the lab. I'm just yeah, so dare it not be true. So here, I mean, we have some backups that are over a year old, where as long as it worked. Uh, that's all that mattered for it. Uh, and then uh, we have others that uh, run more frequently. Some uh, some show fail, but that's just because certain VMs exist. Oh, it's on a server. lab, I get yeah, it. Yeah, certain VMs exist on uh, servers that might not be on at the time the backup is running. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of different uh, processes going on here, and some, some daily, some weekly, uh, some not at all, but uh, kind of mix and mash. And then... Uh, these all run off of uh, one of our uh, last man standing servers. So when we uh, start bringing down items in our lab, uh, this is one of our servers that uh, stays up a little bit longer. It's in the same room that we do uh, that we have our uh, backup uh, appliances in. Wait, wait, wait! Before we continue, <laughs> this isn't done, is it? We're done. Yeah. We're no, there. it is done. You want to know how we're done? Yeah. Did you yeah. see the splash screen? 
that icon is updated. You know, yeah, the you're icon done. is you're updated. Icon, That's it. The, the yes. icon is the visual yes. ID yeah. that we're and, done, and it is actually that simple to use brian you see brian didn't even get lost through this this I podcast done that. why'd you guys all come down here and <laughs> and uh ren if you don't mind hit the help about i want to just hit the splash screen you know and that's just what it when we started that we saw come up real quick it said that we're on v10 here and we're on the right. rtm build piece of trivia why does it say 364 days remaining on my one year license because it's a leap, leap year. year that's right this guy's pretty smart. Yeah. But anyways, that's our that's it. That is how simple it is to upgrade to V10 with Veeam. And, you know, for the customers out there, wait for that GA uh, milestone. You will not miss it. Go to the website at veeam.com, and, you know, that, that's it. That is the upgrade. Is I'm going to say that's new. The technical support button in the community forums, these are clickable links now. Oh, fancies. Look at that. So you can get We've your uh, information right there. Go. Is there another version of the upgrade that's harder? Yeah, we could probably get that for you, but can we break no. it a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a backup admin guy, but that's pretty impressive. Just from, you know, sitting around a conference room table watching right. an enterprise application update at that at that speed. And, and what did we do? Right, we we had a little bit of homework. We had to download the ISO. We had to make sure our license was ready. Sure. And when we advise customers, we also talk about making sure their configuration backup is in good health and then first thing we checked before we recorded is that no jobs are running so that the process can't be interfered with but other than that it just works and this was one take we didn't break it four times and nope. then get it right the fifth time nope. this was one take all the way through and this was environment unseen i haven't been down here in probably two years and you guys haven't had you know haven't called for any issues i've oh. never seen this laptop in my life yeah <laughs> so it's my machine that she's driving there so we go it's <laughs> there we go and we did it from a mac oh yeah we did that's true we are uh console in it no you said that the record time was around seven minutes do we beat that we might because the vm is sitting on flash and the iso is mounted on flash so we're at 12 and a half minutes right now yeah but we we talked Banter. for a while before yeah. we started so yeah we're pretty quick we well th see. that's a reasonable expectation that it's about this long to yeah. do an upgrade and it's, it's pretty most times when applications or, or it vendors say it's going to be 15 minutes from box to rack to provision like whatever those claims are they're normally mm, sometimes right but not always so that was pretty cool but to be fair i mean there are anomalies we had a couple of deprecated platforms this year you know if you're using windows server 2008 that wouldn't work because we've deprecated that platform so is microsoft by the way but little things like that have you know they become small considerations but otherwise you know having the products from an ease of use standpoint very high that's that's right from the top and the co-founders. It's That's how it's supposed to go. All right. Well, we're good to go on this. We're going to be back looking at some of the uh, deeper dives into some of the new features, maybe NAS backup, maybe other things. So stay tuned for those videos. For now, we're out of here, and thanks for watching.